So this is a calorimetry problem. Um, the, the basic concept here is I have a piece of hot metal and I have a thing of cold water. I'm going to mix the two. So because they're starting at different temperatures, the collisions between the metal and the, and the water molecules are going to end up over time resulting in the water molecules speeding up and the metal atoms slowing down. Okay, so, so a shortcut to saying that would be to say that energy is going to get transferred from the metal to the water. Okay, and, and because energy is a nice shortcut, it turns out that the amount of energy that goes from the metal into the water uh, will be equal for both. So the amount of energy this loses will be gained by the water. Uh, so we're assuming this is an insulated system, and I want to do a calculation. So I have 200 grams of water at 20 degrees. I have 40 grams of metal at 100 degrees. And I want to know what the specific heat of the metal is. So hypothetically, I take this chunk of metal and I dunk it in the water, and I stir it, and I measure the temperature, and I do everything I need to to figure out what that change in temperature is. And the final temperature for both comes out to be 22.2 degrees Celsius. So what I want to do in this is I kind of want to set up a problem uh, but in order to do it, it can be a little challenging. I want to start with something really simple. I want to say that whatever energy goes into the water, and I'm going to use Q, heat, as my, as my energy, uh, was lost by the metal. Okay. So whatever heat was picked up by the water was lost by the metal. So the Q of the water is equal to the negative of the Q of the metal. And Q can be represented by the following equation. Uh, I call this M cat mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the mass of the water, specific heat capacity of liquid water, and the temperature change of the water, and then I'm going to compare that to the negative of the mass of the metal times the specific heat of the metal times the temperature change for the metal. So every value in here is for the water. Every value in here is for the metal. And when I plug in, the one thing that I'll be missing will be the specific heat capacity. Okay. So going through line by line, my water is 200 grams. My specific heat capacity of water is something you should have memorized. It's 4.18 or 4.184. And the temperature change. The water starts at 20 and it goes up to 22.2. .2. So the change then is 2.2 .2 degrees Celsius. Okay. That will then be equal to the negative of the mass of the metal, specific heat capacity of the metal, and the temperature change of the metal. So if we start looking at the metal, the metal has 40 grams. The specific heat we don't know, so we're going to leave that as C. And then the temperature change, it starts at 100 and it ends at the same temperature as the water, 22.2. .2. When the temperatures become equal, that's when your energy exchange will start to be at an equilibrium where, where the amounts won't change. Okay, so how much am I dropping from here to here? Well, I'm close to 80 degrees, I'm a little under. I would be at 77.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, but it's dropping in temperature, so that's going to be a negative value. Okay, so my two negative signs end up kind of canceling out. And I'm left with a little algebra problem. But what I would do is I would take 200 times the 4.184 times the 2.2, .2, and that would be all the energy that goes into the water from the hot metal. And then that's equal to the, the amount of energy that the metal is losing, which would be 77.8 times its specific heat capacity times 40. So if I take this Q quantity here for the water, divide it by 40 and divide it by 77.8, I'll get my specific heat capacity. So for that, it comes out to 0.592. And the units on that would be joules per gram per degree Celsius which if we think about for a minute, makes a lot of sense. First of all, we know that water has a very high specific heat capacity. So if you start to heat up water, it doesn't just move faster, it starts to wiggle, it starts to rotate, it starts to stretch. All of these other things have, that happen allow for a bigger capacity of energy. So it takes a lot of energy to cause all of those things to happen and water to speed up. So the temperature rise on water is very slow, or it takes a lot of energy at least, um, because of all the other things that are going on. Metals, on the other hand, don't do a lot of those things. So the metallic bonds in there uh, work a little differently than the fact that I have molecules in this. So you're not going to see as much of those factors, and so therefore if you heat up metal, most of that energy is going to make it move faster. Its temperature will then rise a lot based on specific heat. So we see a specific heat capacity that's almost 10 times smaller than water's. Okay. 
that makes sense from the fact that it's a metal. Okay. The second thing that makes sense is if you look at the temperature change. The water only changed by two degrees, whereas the metal dropped by almost eight. Okay. Then we do have different amounts. We do have five times the water, but you're not seeing five times the temperature drop. You're seeing, you know, a lot more than that. So, anyways. This answer makes sense. Now the units of this, what this means is that if you put 0.592 joules of energy into the metal for each gram of it, you would see it rise in temperature by one degree. If you had two grams of it, it would take twice that energy to make it go up a degree. If you wanted it to have two grams go up by three degrees, then you would have to have this amount times two and then times three again. So kind of understanding what specific heat capacity is, will help in kind of making sense of your answer when you get there, okay? But that would be how you would do a calorimetry calculation, okay? You would set Q equal to Q, and then very carefully you would put your MCAT where every variable is towards the one chemical on one side, and every variable is towards the other chemical on the other side. You don't need the negative sign, I included it here to be technically correct, but if you just put MCAT equals MCAT, as long as you didn't make your temperature change negative, it would all work out.